Hello it's Joey and today we're making envelopes with three pockets using just really basic supplies. So I'm making envelopes like all of these beautiful ones and they have three pockets inside for your junk journals and they're really easy to make. I've made them today with either just regular copy paper and it doesn't even matter if it's got type on one side but you could also use any of your beautiful digital papers or scrapbook papers I've just got a few here to show as examples and you can also use book pages I love using maps for making envelopes and using in junk journals so you could use that I'll show you how to fold it so that the text on the front or the picture is upright, upright as well as the text or the picture on the back and I'll show you how to use your scraps and have so much fun decorating them like this or like this or like this I will show you if you want to how to add a little closure on the back and of course I'll show you how to stick it all together how to glue all of these together for which I used washi tape I have some beautiful washi tape to share with you today. I've used some gorgeous foiled washi tape and I've also used some beautiful colours, muted browns and greens and I have a discount code in the description box below so check that out as well. And I also have, because I know you like these and find them useful for your own projects, a screenshotable piece of paper here with the process on for making these envelopes. So take a screenshot of that and let's have a go at making these three pocket envelopes. So let's make a three pocket envelope, maybe one like this. So I have a closure on it and just to show you I've collaged on the front and then we have three little compartments in there. So plenty of space for putting either happy mail or putting lots of other goodies in your junk journal. So I'm taking a piece of A4 paper which is about 21 centimetres by roughly 30 centimetres and the first thing I'm going to do is fold down the long side here. So I'm going to fold this in and I'm just estimating about a three centimetre fold and you do want to be as accurate as you can when you're folding this and just burnishing it. Maybe it's best to flatten that down with a bone folder if you can. So this is going to be our envelope flap and so you're just thinking how deep do you want that envelope flap to be without stealing too much of the depth over here of the envelope. So having done that I'm now going to fold this left side over and I'm going to take it to almost the right hand edge that I had there. So I'm actually leaving about a two millimetre gap so that this piece here is about two millimetres short of this right hand edge here. Again let's make sure it's really crisp. The crisper you can get this and the neater the better but we don't need perfection. I'm then going to fold it up all the way just like that and I said I would give you the process steps so let's just check those off for you so you know that we're doing okay and you could use these in your own projects we have folded the paper lengthwise leaving about a three millimeter flap on the right hand side we folded it lengthwise again leaving that two millimeter gap on the right and then we fold it up and we've made it all nice and crisp and flattened everything down. Now what we're going to do is open the paper up and we're going to cut an envelope flap to shape and also do a little bit of gluing. So let's open it up and I'm going to create an envelope flap using this little oblong that we've created from our folds. And that means that I want to, just using my scissors, cut off an angle, cut off a corner here with whatever slope you want your envelope to show. And having done one side, I'm going to create the mirror image as best possible using my eyes just over here. 
So this here is our envelope flap and I'm also going to take a tiny little piece out of the other half of that oblong that we created with the folds. So just a piece of pie here with this being our envelope flap. I've taken a tiny bit as an angle here and I'm just going to shave off a tiny bit at the bottom down here and this very slight cut over here is just to help it stick down neatly and not get in the way so we don't have to worry too much about what the angle is there. So I've got an envelope flap here and I've got a very strangely shaped envelope looking flap on the bottom and I'm going to glue this lower flap down so I'm just going to put some glue on there and fold it over and neatly press that into place stick it down. I have seen this envelope be made by just snipping this off but whenever possible the reason I glue this down is I do think every time we retain any of our flaps or folds and I do this with pockets it just makes the whole item a little bit stronger. So that is our basic envelope template created. What we want to do, let's check our process steps. We've done number four, we opened up the paper, we cut the envelope flap, we trimmed the lower one too and we glued that down which means we're already at this really fun stage of doing some collage or some decoration and I have had so much fun just going to town really using my bits of scraps and my bits of pattern papers covering all of these. I absolutely loved the process. I've used book pages, I've used pieces of absolutely stunning paper and I've also done it just with a glossy book page and I'll show you how to do that too. So what I'm going to do is just grab my little bits of paper and my scraps and show you how I have a go at just doing a little bit of easy collage on the front and I also like to cover up the flap. I pulled out some beautiful papers to share with you today partly because I just absolutely love them and I'm finding a way of incorporating these into my projects. So these are a few of the pages from a recent Tracy Fox Jessica Rapp set of digital papers and the reason I like these is the images are proportionate to the size of envelope that I'm making. So if I have a look at these birds down here I've got individual birds that will fit on part of the envelope that I've made. So not only are these papers just utterly sumptuous and glorious in colour, I mean just look at that, they actually work for us in this project or in the project using the size of paper that I've used. And I think it's also true for some of the other papers in this kit. So this is just illustrating the sorts of pattern papers you might want to use. But of course what you could also use, this is a Victoria Designs one that I've also been using, you can also use just pieces of book page. And I do, do think old book page collaged on the front of these works well too. So I, I have done one here with just a map. This is from a Spanish book I've got. I had a little bit of music paper, I tucked it behind and I've got some Amazon packing paper. I've got a floral focal point and a label and I just had a bit of fun doing some collage on that one. Here's another example. This is old book page. Here's a little piece from one of those digital papers and I've just mixed them up and chosen a green label because that went with the green of the butterfly wing that's peeping out. So there are all sorts of ways that you can just use up your scraps. More book page and label and that beautiful beautiful Victoria Designs paper. So let's just have a go with maybe a little bit of paper and see what we can do to collage the front. My suggestion is that you, you also collage on the flap as well because I think that works really nicely. Let's have a go. So these are some of the little bits that I've been using. I might just choose from one of these. Shall we play with the butterfly piece? Get some glue onto the front left here and just as I've done with other collage projects I'm not going to take the glue 
all the way to the top edge of the envelope so I'm just going to take the glue about half a centimetre or so away from that top edge and I'm, I'll show you when I come to collage the flap it just makes it a be bit easier. I've got a piece of pattern paper so I'll have that on the left hand side press that down and I've got a few little bits of scrap paper here left over pages that have come from that's from a beautiful old vintage encyclopedia I like the type on this let's let's maybe fold that on half and use that I think that can go on there in fact I like the raggedy edge so I think I'll choose that one and this time I am going to just overlap it on here, put that down, that can go there, and I'll have just a little bit of glue on here, press that down. And remember we didn't take the glue all the way to the top edge of this piece which means if I'm a bit smart I can take maybe another piece of paper and tuck that under and I've chosen one that has got script on and I'm going to have it so that the script is the correct way up on the flap and this is where Leaving a little bit of a gap is great because I can tuck this piece under but I found that if I was just a little bit thoughtful when I was doing this collage I could actually have an envelope flap that was the right way up. So I'm going to have that tucked under there, collage a bit there, try and get it straight, let's just show you. So, so far I've got a pretty piece, a square, I added an extra book page on the right or a piece of one and then I've just added a little bit on my flap so it's that way up, the correct way up if you want to say that when it's folded. And because I don't like straight lines, in fact I can glue that down now, put a bit more in here. I want to use a bit of scrap paper to just make that straight line disappear. This is Amazon packing paper that's been sitting in my squirty box, so the box I have when I want to spray mica onto things and underneath it collects all those beautiful speckled bits of paint so gradually it just becomes a little bit sparkly and then I use it. So I'm going to put that on there just to cover up that straight edge. It's so much fun collaging these. I can't tell you how relaxing it is. It's just one of my favourite things, just pulling together patterns and book pages and seeing what happens. So that is the front collage. I think what I'll do is just add a little bit of a label like I did on this one. So I just want some extra focal point there. So I dug out a few Tracy labels and I think I want a green one because that is such a lovely green that's coming through the arc of the butterfly. So let's have one of those on there. And I'm choosing a part of the image on here where I'm not losing too much picture. And I also like the idea of having a label which is one third on one of the images and two thirds on the book page. So I'm using that rule of thirds to the eye. And all I need to do now is go around this with a pair of scissors, carefully just trim off the excess. It's a slightly larger pair of scissors. And you can see that what we've done, even though that copy paper, that scrap paper, which I just didn't want to throw away, it's too good. We have to find uses. The type face is hidden in the inside. So it doesn't matter if there's scribble or writing on one of the sides of paper, in fact, we've collaged on the other side. 
So we really we've hidden up hidden quite a lot. You could collage on the back, I'm just choosing not to on this occasion. So now we've got our basic envelope. We've got three pockets and we've collaged it. What we can do now, and this is optional, is add a closure. And I made these last week in a video. I used scrap card and very quickly and easily just pulled quite a few together. So if you want to, check out my video where I made them. The reason these are a little bit different is I have a method of adding really slim washi tape to give them a pattern, which I think makes them really smart and just a bit more high-end, and also a method of colouring them so that you can have a range of colours in your little boxes, a beautiful gold and green one there, and just use them so that they coordinate and it really brings the whole of your projects together. I've also been using coloured brads to go with whatever theme or tone or set of colours I've got. So I am going to add a closure I think and to do that the first thing I will do and I'll do this while the glue underneath all that collage is still just a little bit damp in fact I'll just tuck that down is I'm folding the flap over and giving it a good bend just so that it makes it easier to stay in place. I think first of all I'll just measure to find the middle of my flap five and a half and I'll just use my negative to find where I want to make a hole, in fact I wasn't far off, so that a substantial amount of the flap tucks underneath the closure that I'm going to add but doesn't get in the way of the brad when I've done it and I'll use a needle to make a hole there and what colours do we have? We have lots of lovely greens so take one of my green circles that I made, make a hole in that and I just need to steal one of my mini brads, maybe we need a pink one, we've got some pink in here, it's rather vibrant this one, let's have a pink brad, so I'll have a pink brad in my closure and I will just, I'll get that opened up a little bit just to get it going, to make it easier to open up when it's through. And just push my brad through the back. There we go. And in fact I can open it up and make life easy. I like to open it up so that the pins are opening and sit down horizontally or parallel actually I should say, parallel to here but I was also told a smart thing which is take a piece of washi and cover it up. So thanks for the comments on my last video, very helpful. Let's just get a little bit of washi over that and we have a collaged envelope with a closure. What we just need to do now is add washi around the side so I'll at this point maybe steal from my lovely set of absolutely gorgeous tones of brown and green and blue and pick one to put around this. So what I'm going to do is put washi tape around three sides of the envelope here, here and here. Let me show you on one I've done. So I'm going to put washi tape around these three sides so that of course we can still open it at the top and I think this is a great project if you feel that you've got perhaps an abundance of washi tapes and some of us do, I have a large basket sitting behind me which is too full and you just want to have some projects to make sure you play with them a little bit. So let's start with the sides, I think I'll start over here. I've chosen a lovely sage green one and this has actually got, if you can see on here, it's got little bits of text and script on it, which I really, really like. It's also quite sticky and we do want the washi tapes to be fairly sticky for this project. Some washi tapes, because perhaps they're meant to be just decorative, don't have as much stick and you do want ones which do their job in terms of holding the pages together. So I've stuck piece down trying to have 
roughly the same amount on the front as will be on the back when we fold that round. And the way that I like to do the corners, and you may have your own way of doing this, it's a bit like when you're wrapping a present. I just snip across, maybe when you've been doing journal covers and you've been covering them, snip across at an angle, fold one piece in, and also at the top, I'm just going to give that an angle as well. And I think it just looks that little bit tidier when we fold these in. Let's just take that out, fold that over, and because it's sitting on top of white paper, I can see just a little, little bit of this fancy text that's in the washi tape. Let's take our tape again and do the other short side. So again, just about half of the washi tape width, trying to be as straight as possible. Let's get that on there. We'll have, trim it off at the top and just give it a little bit of a slope here. I just think it looks a bit neat and tidy. And at the bottom, do the same, just give it a bit of a corner, fold that up, fold that in, so easy, and of course what we want to do is just have a piece across the bottom here, so again I think I'll, I'll do that from the front and just get that on there. Trimming, trimming, and fold that up. And I really like the fact that with the sage green washi and with my green and gold closure with a beautiful pink brad and then my pinks and greens on the front, it just feels like it all works, it all comes together. I wanted to show you how to do it to make sure that when you do it with book pages, the front with text upright is also the same on the back so the text is upright on the back as well as the front which is not always to achieve when you're making envelopes out of book pages with a more traditional method so let me just have a go at showing you that and also suggest a couple of book page types that work because I think many of us have book pages that we might want to use for this project this is the book that I've been using for making these nice large and robust I mean, feel that, it's gorgeous three pocket envelope and for this one I have been using rather luxurious washi tape with this gorgeous gold foiling. I just think it's beautiful and we end up with something absolutely stunning. So I'll show you how I use that in a second. So this book, I didn't really know what to do with it and I didn't want to get rid of it. It was something I bought for my dad later on in his life just to look through and we don't, he doesn't, he's not with me anymore, so I wanted to do something with it. So look at these, oh sorry about the glare, look it's got gorgeous historical pictures in, some really big ones, and some beautiful text, beautiful Jackie Kennedy. So what can I do with this? I'm going to take a piece out and show you how I turn these into some lovely envelopes and then we're appreciating every page and I get use and value out of every page I love it so this is as I said a big one this is nearly 29 centimeters wide and 28 centimeters height so almost square and I found that in this technique if I treat this as the top of my envelope which means I want this to be the flap then when I finish with my folding I will end up with text front and back being the right way up so I will begin and if I want this on the outside which I do she's very pretty I am going to fold my flap in about three centimeters so let's just do that just give that a bit of burnish let's just make that nice and crisp so logically we're going to have 
this on the front. I'm going to have this being the flap. So just as we did before, fold the other side over and I'm leaving just a couple of millimetres short. So you can see, here's an image that I want to keep on the front. And if that's going to be on the front, what we need to do is just fold it up. There we go. Make that nice and crisp again. It's going to be quite a nice size of envelope and I think this really would be great for Happy Mail if you want to put quite a few things in it. So I'm opening it up and just as we had before I've got a rectangular piece here, a rectangular piece there and I'm going to turn my top rectangular piece into a flap. The corner off and just a mirror image over here and just a little bit on the other side and then equally I'm going to just take a little bit off the end there. So let's take a bit of glue, stick that lower flap down and with this one I'm not going to collage it so what I want to do, just show you how it comes together, there's our beautiful image, I want to add a closure very quickly and I do think because it's thicker card, well almost cardstock, I need a closure to help that stay down. I'll just use my negative space to check that it's going to be sufficiently under the closure that it will hold. I think we'll have it there. Take my needle and just push a hole through. Oh, I do like these gold ones. I'm going to have a hole in my little closure, another little brad, maybe a subtle pink one. And just as it was suggested, I'm going to take a little bit of washi, and cover that up. And that gives me a good hold for the flap, like that. And I've got pictures and text from the lovely Kennedys and I've also got text describing them the right way up here and all I need to do on this one is also add washi around three sides so let's just have a go at that with our gorgeously luxurious washi. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure roughly the right amount, tear that off and then I am going to tear this in two lengthwise and I really like the tatty edge on the front of the envelope. I don't really want that straight edge, I want it to feel a bit more boho. So I am going to take the back off this and there is back and the one thing I would say about this washi is it's not the easiest to get the back from the front so, you, so you're left with just the sticky front. And because it's a really wide piece of washi, there's plenty to go at. But the other thing I would say for, for envelopes like this that are using stiff paper, you do need stiff, stiff washi, well, sticky washi. And never before have I known washi as sticky as this. So the joy of this particular luxurious washi tape is its unbelievable stickiness, which is absolutely fantastic for specific projects. I'll trim the top again, just to try and get it an angle, make that tidy. And I've got a straight line down the back, but I've got a lovely wavy edge at the front. Let me have a go with the other piece. One tip I've got, if you do tear these in two, you end up with better chance of separating the front from the back at the tattered edge where it just starts to come apart. So again I'm going to put the tatty edge on the inside. Just take that, reposition it to where I want. Take that down there. Cut my corner at an angle, cut my top at an angle. Hold 
this down flat so that the pages are in the position you want them to be in and fold that over, so fold that in and then I'm just going to take one more piece, halve it lengthwise, rip it down the middle and add it to the bottom. So I'll try to position this one again so that roughly half of the width that I've got is on the front. Trim my corners at an angle. It's like packing a parcel, isn't it? It's a bit like that envelope folder I made the other week when I was wrapping it with Amazon packing paper. I've got one near. When I was putting all of this packing paper around it, I was using these snips at the corners to make it tidy. Let's fold that up. And there we go. And these are my three pocket envelopes using really basic supplies. Here's the process we followed if you'd like to take a screenshot. And if you've enjoyed seeing me make these, then check out my video where I make these little collaged index cards. I use lots of little scraps of paper and they're really fun and easy to make. I hope to see you soon.